Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, sunshines, and hello, Julie. Well, hello, Ingaloo. How are you? I am good. Yeah? Yes. Me too. I'm always excellent. Always High self esteem. Yeah. Suffer from it, Suffer. even with this face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You just have to have confidence. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I was going to ask you we have kind of the opposite thing going on as, you know, complete opposite of schools out for summer. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going back to school. So, right. tell me, what are your girls up to? Oh, let's see. Well, Bailey's finally done with school. Uh, she's now working um, at the college. So, that's very exciting. Um, but, Callie is a sophomore at Montana State University at Bozeman. Nice. Um, she left about a month ago because she already got her apartment and everything. Nice. So uh, they start tomorrow. Oh, very yeah, good. Yeah, Wednesday. So she went and spent several hundred dollars <laughs> on um, her books today. That was her, her task was to get all of her books ready and, oh, and nice. figure out where her classes were. Nice. And tell our listeners what Callie is studying. Uh, she is in social um, social work with um, it, an emphasis in um, criminology. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she's going to be fantastic because yes. she already is. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. All righty. Well, I told you guys last podcast that um, today's verse is coming to you straight from Grandma Jean Irvin <laughs> or Jean Irvin. That is my mom. Yes. Mother, and, grandma. And she, she sent us one. She listened to instructions. I guilted her into listening to the first four episodes because <laughs> I actually told she hadn't listened to them yet. And I said, well, I just need you to know that <laughs> Julie's mom has listened to all of them. <laughs> that was like at 10 o'clock at night. Pure the pressure. next morning, I like eight o'clock. She's like, I listened to all of them. <laughs> I didn't know she had a competitive bone, but she does evidently. So she listened and she, she did great. And she submitted this verse to us and then, um, it went into a spam folder and it got lost in email, never, never land. And so she kept asking me about it and I was like, what the heck? Well, anyway, we, we recovered it. We located it. And here we are weeks later to share with you grandma Jean's verse, um, Philippians four, seven through six, six through seven. Who is running this thing? (laughs) Good grief. (sighs) Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Here we go. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Jesus Christ. I love that. Yeah, I do too. And this is what Grandma Jean had to say about it. The thing to remember is when you hand off your concerns and requests to Jesus, don't keep taking them back. I picture him saying to me, let go, I've got this. Take some deep breaths, have faith, and wait for that peace to settle in. Oh. I know. And she even signed it, Grandma Jean. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. So back up just a bit. Yes. Because that, that verse, what Grandma Jean just said, is going to apply to you too. You never told us now about your child, and I know you're going to have a tough (laughs) week. But when is, what is her story? Dang it, I thought we were going to skip over that because yeah, no, we I weren't gotcha. doing the cryometer. <laughs> okay. Well, my, well, my oldest, we all know, has gone to Tennessee. Yeah, she left And us. I know, she's long gone. Mm. Anyway, youngest, actually this week, um, is the start of her college career mm. at the University of Idaho, where she will be studying um, agriculture education. Very good. So it's, it's rough. It's really rough. Honestly, she hasn't actually left yet because um, she was on the national or the state team to compete at national um, FFA and they were the state champions in parliamentary procedure. And so they had part of that national um, competition is happening like remotely. Mm -hmm. So she had to stay here and be able to um, work with her team to get that done. They actually just got done 
I don't know, probably a half an hour ago, oh, said wow. it was the best demonstration they've ever done. So they are hopeful and we're sending all the good energy and good vibes their way because these kids have made me incredibly proud. They, yeah. they have worked so hard and they just really work together well as a team. So yeah. anyway, but yes, last weekend we went and, um, or last week, I guess we went and moved her into her dorm, got all of those things situated and there's just always, there's been so many like events and things like upcoming that I haven't really let myself stop and think about yeah. the impact. Yeah. Uh, you did tell me that the empty nest thing is really not that bad, that I might <laughs> actually find that I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> it takes a little bit. I'm not going to be that <laughs> that callous. <laughs> yes. Well, I know it's going to be hard and, and we'll miss her so much, just like we missed Sammy when she yeah. moved out and uh, started to adult. But I am so confident in the University of Idaho and the professors that I know she's going to be working with yeah. um, that I have every confidence that things are going to go really, really well. Um, so anyway, it's going to be good. It's going to be great and I'm not going to cry. So, well, all you have to do is apply mother's verse. Yes. And then what she said is you just can't worry. Yep. I just have to hand it off and I don't get to take it back. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus. Even, even when those kids drive down the driveway and you're worried about them driving, or you're worried about them knowing that they're at college, but they're doing this or that. You just have to, one of the things I say every day is, okay, Lord, I'm just going to take my hands off the wheel and you, you have a plan. Yes. It's really true. Yeah. And the more I believe that, the more peace I am given. It's true. It's It's, so You've got to give it up and you've got to just let the Lord take care of you because he's the one in control. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll keep praying for our babies, though, that are new back to college. Yes, yes. absolutely. And yes. to all of you out there, if you yes. have babies going to college, just know that we're there with you. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you have a verse that you would like to send to us, we would love to share it with the listeners. And you can send it to the Caregiven Podcast at gmail.com. Yep. Again, that's the Caregiven Podcast at gmail.com. I'm going to have you read your uplifting story. Then I'm going to read my uplifting story and then I'm going to turn it over to you because the topic of the day is kind of more your wheelhouse than mine. So okay, tell us what's exciting and uplifting today. Well, you know, I found this, uh, this story about uh, Promise Keepers and what Promise Keepers is, is a group of men that uh, are, they're just a good, solid Christian family men and they get together and... Um, and it doesn't say exactly when it was in 2021, but there was 30,000 men that got together in wow. Dallas. And the whole bunch of them just gets together and, and just empowers each other to be better husbands, better dads, better coaches, whatever their position in life is. And it's all through the power of, of believing in God. And um, they were at the AT and t Stadium that um, holds the Dallas Cowboys. And they had all kinds of different speakers. But I personally know of some men that have been in Promise Keepers and they swear that it's probably one of the coolest uh, things for men. I saw a video on it and some of the men actually took their kids, their boys, and um, I saw them with them up on their shoulders. And what a, what a mentor. Yeah. I mean, to sit there and take your kid, your son and, and say, son, this is my expectation and on how you are going to grow and who you're going to be so that when you become a leader, be, when you become a husband, this is how you will act. That's, that is awesome. We need a lot of that. Yeah. We need good leadership and yeah. we need good guidance and good mentors and good dads out there setting good examples. So yes, that is cool. I'll have to look into that. So you it's, said it's yeah, promise keepers, promise keepers. It's, nice. it's a men's group. It started in the 1990s and it was actually uh, founded by a uh, former university of Colorado football coach, Bill McCartney. Mm. And it's a movement that encourages men to be Christ-like leaders for their church and community. Mm. This uh, massive men's of events from the 90s had uh, waned because of the pandemic. So how thrilling that they were all able to get together again oh, nice. and have over um, 30,000 people yeah. men get together and because we need those leaders. Yes. yes. Oh, that's a great story. Well, I have another local story <laughs> and this one is super, super near and dear to my heart. And the reason that it is, is because it it's like, it encompasses the two things that are the most important to me. And that is, um, working with the elderly, but also working with kids. So mm-hmm. we know that through, um, 4-H and FFA, these are, these are youth organizations and the majority of what I have been able to do with them, um, has a lot to do with 
livestock or raising livestock. But I mean, ultimately, it's really not about raising the livestock because you, you're building kids when you do this. Um, so I don't know. It was so, I, I guess it was actually on July 4th that this article came out in the, the Daily Interlake here in our own town. And I'm just going to read it to you because I think it's worth reading. So it says, while other kids use their time off to play and relax, Flathead Valley sisters Jubilee and Jane McLean have been hard at work on projects that aim to improve the lives of those struggling with memory memory loss and people who use wheelchairs. The girls put their sewing talents into action. For her 4-H service project, 12-year-old Jubilee has been creating fidget aprons for those with Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia. Jane, who is 10, is sewing quilts designed for those in wheelchairs. Jubilee took inspiration from her grandmother, who had made a fidget apron for a friend of hers who had Alzheimer's. The apron was full of familiar motions, buttons to undo, zippers, and beads to fiddle with, along with other creative elements. Jubilee explained in a speech to her Dandy Dudes and Dolls 4-H Club that her mother's friend loved to busy her hands and was always going through drawers. At one point, the friend was given a box filled with things to occupy her hands, but the objects too often fell to the floor. She nearly fell out of her wheelchair, attempting to reclaim them. Fidget aprons seemed to be the perfect solution. Following her grandmother's lead, Jubilee broached the idea of producing fidget aprons to the other Dandy Dudes and Dolls members, who also took interest in the newly formed project. Um, The first step was research. Each aspect of the apron was researched with meticulous attention to detail. For example, Jubilee explained fabrics, fabrics like velvet, lace, fleece, and satin are comforting as they run their fingers over them. And using a variety of colors on a neutral background makes the apron exciting and fun to look at without being overwhelming. In the same speech to her 4-H club, she emphasized that because dementia includes confusion, it's especially important that the elements on the apron are comforting without inducing anxiety or fear as an image of a bug or snake could. After weeks of research, Jubilee and her 4-H club set out to gather materials. They searched um, thrift stores top to bottom while other materials were donated. Using belts, zippers, buttons, ribbons, beads, and a lot of fabric, the group produced 24 aprons. Each took over eight hours to create. Most of the work was done individually as the COVID-19 pandemic prevented the group from meeting for long periods of time. The aprons are now ready to be entered at the Northwest Montana Fair where the project will be judged and aprons donated. Half will be donated to the Montana Veterans Home and the rest to another memory care facility. And, uh, The most rewarding part was seeing how the aprons can slow dementia, Jubilee said. She explained how sensory stimulation, especially from familiar motions like those provided on the aprons, can help those with dementia remain comfortable and independent. And then alongside Jubilee, Jane is doing her part to help the community as well. In the cold Montana winter, Jane and her Dandy Dudes and Dolls 4-H Club recognized a need for wheelchair-friendly blankets. With careful attention to size, fabric, and cost, Jane designed quilts that sit atop the user's lap without falling and getting stuck in the wheels. Jane and her family produced 15 of these quilts over the winter, which they then donated to Lakeview Care Center in February. Jane will be presenting the quilts as her 4-H service project at the fair in August, and her favorite part, she said, is being able to give them away. After describing the 4-H project, or describing the project to her 4-H group, Jane left them with a simple message. Find something you can do for someone else. In her speech, Jubilee, too, emphasized the importance of using one's talents to serve others. And that is exactly what the two sisters and the dandy dudes and dolls did. So I love these girls. And we have had the distinct honor and privilege to work with them through the Lamb Project. But to see what else they are doing Mm -hmm. is just incredible to me. And so I could not not read that story. Oh, my word. Those are amazing kids. <laughs> they are. And for them to even have the insight or to, to think about uh, beyond themselves yeah. is huge. And uh, just the knowledge that they have of the disease already. <laughs> are you kidding me? I do see some future Epaga home care owners. <laughs> yes, yes. So let me uh, gather myself up here. Oh, oh I think the cry meter is out. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm so proud of them. Oh, so cool. Yeah, pretty okay, proud so of those girls. I'm going to announce the topic, and then I'm handing it over to you, Jules. <laughs> That's how I felt when you were talking about the bills and all the money things. That was not my thing. <laughs> yes. Okay, so essentially, the topic of today, ADLs, yeah. activities of daily living. Yes. Let's explain those. Okay, so 
when somebody works at a PAGA home care, they have to be trained as a personal care attendant, uh, which we call our uh, our group, the APAGA Accredited Caregivers. They go through this training, and um, what they have to do is learn about activities of daily living, because obviously that's what we do when we go into people's homes. So um, ADLs, Activities of Daily Living, is what you're going to hear Whenever you're talking to a doctor, um, you're filling out insurance forms, and it's all of the things that we as able-bodied people take for granted mm-hmm. that we can do. You know, it's it's bathing, it's hygiene, it's meal preparation, exercise, those simple things that, like I said, we take for granted because we can do them. But as you're starting to decline or, or you, you've had a surgery and you can't reach your foot, to put on your shoe and you need help, that's an activity daily li- a living that we can help you with. And so what we're going to do is just kind of touch on each of those. And we could talk for days oh, yes. on each one of these separately. Yep. We're not going to do that, so don't panic. <laughs> um, but we're just going to basically talk about those things. Um, one of the things that if you ever want more information, you know, find us, talk to us, get on our um you know, our address or or look us up on Facebook and ask questions. We're here to help with very basic things. Um, And then there's lots of information out there on Facebook, um, just different groups. um, And on YouTube, there's lots of videos. We actually have a, a, a group that we use uh, called pahomecare.org right now. And um, those are videos that you can watch everything from how to bathe somebody, um, how to, um, how does a pill work through the body? Because for you to even understand that, mm-hmm. you know, everybody is a caregiver at some point in their life and they sure. don't even realize it as a caregiver because it's just what you do. Sure. It's when you're taking care of your grandma or your grandma's taking care of the grandkids or an aunt or uncle needs some extra care or the neighbor needs a ride. That's a form of caregiving. But when you're going to be a professional caregiver, um, then you just need to understand why you're doing those things. And if you're doing them, is there a better way to do them? Sure. Because another thing that happens um, that we have to be careful for in home care is safety. Mm-hmm. Safety is all a, the bottom line. For you, the the caregiver, for the client, for the family members, safety in the home is a big deal. So... Um, what we're going to talk about is, uh, we'll, we'll just start off with like bathing. So one of the biggest injuries in home is when somebody is getting in and out of the tub. Mm-hmm. And so when we teach on activities of daily living, we talk about safety in the bathroom, mm-hmm. you know, the wet floors, how to get somebody with a shower chair into the tub. One of the things that when I do a home visit is I actually do an assessment of the bathroom and what I'm looking for in a bathroom. Let's start with the potty. Um, is, is it some toilets are very, very close to the ground, but what if you're a taller person and you have to go all the way down you know, just think about the torque on those knees. Mm -hmm. And so they've got risers that are four to six inches that even that amount of extra on the toilet seat as a riser is that much less torque on your knees. And then do you need to have some kind of a handheld around the toilet um, to help you just boost yourself up a little bit? And then the bathroom in the, 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 when you get into the shower, do you need a shower chair? And the shower chairs are, you know, they can fit in inside of the, the tub or they can be longer so that you can sit your bottom on there and then slide in because the biggest scare is having somebody lift up their legs to get in and out because inside it's slickery. Mm-hmm. So what are the safety things you can do there? Lots of handhelds mm-hmm. um, and the railing and you can get those at Walmart with the suction and um, handheld um, uh, like the shower heads? Shower heads yep. are, are a must mm-hmm. because if we're helping somebody and they're sitting down, how are we going to get all the soap out of their hair? Mm-hmm. And so, um, but every house is different. Sure. And so those are the things that you have to take into consideration when you're helping somebody with a bath. Well, yeah. And like um, some of the things that we do is even just 
getting the water temperature correct yep. before somebody gets in. Yep. And so there are like varying levels oh, of, yeah. of the amount of assistance that somebody needs with that particular activity of daily living. They might, like you're saying, they might just need help getting their legs up and over the tub and then they're able to take care of everything. You know, they may just want, maybe they're in the early stages and they just need to know that somebody is in the home yep. in case they get into trouble in the bathroom. But it is important to think about um, what are the needs and really be paying attention to those safety features and I mean relatively inexpensive things that you can do in a bathtub um, to be able to help provide a little extra uh, safety measure for yeah. someone. Even on the, the bottom of the tub mm -hmm. you can get one of those suction cup um, or the mat the things. mats yep. or they even have the cute little fishes I've, that have a little bit of um some kind of a surface material that you're it's not near as slickery yes but even us as able-bodied i mean there was one time i just about took a header <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was just because that i had to reach for the soap or something that wasn't in its normal spot yeah so it just takes a second and you've yeah. got a big problem mm -hmm. so um when you're when you're bathing the first thing to do is what is going to make things easier. Right. And so that is the biggest thing about bathing. Once again, we could talk about this in a whole section by itself, but I just want to kind of really condense the major things. Sure. What are the what, what primary are the activities? Big, of daily big living? things that we can do to for safety mm -hmm. and, and activities of daily living. Um, one of the things that is interesting when people are hired here, one of the they have to start the training mm -hmm. immediately before they can work shifts. And um a lot of people are like, you know, I, I knew this stuff, but I didn't know why I knew it. And, or they'll say, oh my gosh, I hadn't thought about doing it that way. So even though, like I said, we're all pretty much caregivers, uh, a, a training like this, I think there's two trainings that everybody in the world should take. They should take a first responder class if there's an emergency and they should take a PCA class <laughs> so we can know how to help each other yep. without putting e either ourselves or them in danger. Yep. So that's, that's kind of bathing. Um, showering is, is with the bathing, but, um, and it just depends once again on the house. Does somebody have a bathroom that has a bath, but it's downstairs, but that person can't get downstairs nowadays. There are so many things to think about. Well, and you know, they actually even make like portable, portable showers mm -hmm. for people. Oh yeah. We've, we've helped clients before where like, just like you're saying, the bathroom is not accessible yeah. based on what's going on with that person. And so there are so many options out there and, and ways to kind of make this happen in a safe manner for people as they have a decline. Yeah, I, I actually did something the other day that I still, the guy's still really mad at me. <laughs> but as I was doing a quick assessment on his um, bathroom, it was an older house. And nowadays, they're getting better about making wider doors and wider areas for wheelchairs and ADA specs and all right. of that. But this was an, a much older house. And so it was impossible for him to get a wheelchair through there. Or when he did get in there, then he was able to hold the sides of the wall and also of the 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 cabinet but I actually made the family take the door off to go into the bathroom because if he fell inside and he fell against that door it's a swingy yeah. indoor and basically if he was against that how in the world are they going to get in to help him yeah and, no, that's brilliant. And so what they did, and I gave them permission, and that's why God gave me really big shoulders, <laughs> I had them blame it on me. Yes. And and so because the son took it off and knew he was going to get, he's like, I'm <laughs> in so much trouble. And I said, you know what? Tell them I said it had to be done. Yeah. And they don't even know who Julie is, but man, are they mad at her. <laughs> so, it just seems to be a reoccurring thing. Yes, game. <laughs> yes. I, I give everybody permission to use me as the bad guy oh. for sure. And along with bathing, you know, th you've got to just really be careful with making sure that once you get the shampoo and everything out, get it all out. Yes. And then dry that person. And then it kind of comes into a hygiene thing where you add lotion. Yep. Um, don't forget that with hygiene, um, our elders, um, their skin gets much more thin. fragile and thin. And what you were saying earlier about the heat yes. of the water, I'll tell you what, I if I don't get out of bath 
out of a bath and I'm as hot as red as a lobster, I didn't have a good bath. <laughs> but that heat could scald somebody that was yes. older and had that thinner skin. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, you know, actually a question on our test that they have to take is what do you do? And once the water is run, you actually have them to test the water. Yes. And so um, watch for that. But that lo lotion and that hygiene is so important. And then also thinking about the number of baths per week is different. If it's winter, if it's summer, if this is somebody that is not sweating like they used to because they're just sitting around a lot more during the day versus going out and chopping wood or, or doing chores. So a lot of things to factor. The other thing is incontinence. Mm -hmm. And so if that person is having incontinence issues, then um, they need a bath more often. Yeah. Got to keep that skin integrity. You know, and that's another thing that when we are doing a bath, we are also, like you said, the skin integrity, we're looking for red marks. Um, and when we have any kind of a, a breakdown, it's actually in the bony areas. So I'm not going to have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but even laying in bed and somebody that's only in bed all of the time, you've got to watch for their knees, their ankles, their elbows, those mm -hmm. types of things, because that's where these ulcers, these mm -hmm. bed sores can yeah. start. So, you know, you've got to think about the whole person. Well, and something that I was thinking about that's um, not a technical thing in terms of bathing, but that's really, really important is if you have somebody that's resisting, mm -hmm. um, something that we've learned over time is that think about take like yourself, you're taking a bath and you step out and it's cold. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you have got to make sure that the room that you are giving that, you know, the bathroom that you're in, that it's warm and um, that it, it's not shocking to this person yeah. because if you're having a struggle getting someone to take a bath or a shower, um, that might be part of the reason why. Yeah. So really be thinking about the environment and making it as comfortable as you possibly can. I know that there are a lot of times when caregivers, they get done with that bath and they are just sweating. I mean, they're dripping sweat, but you know what? They're making darn sure that yeah. their client is comfortable. Yeah. We actually had a gentleman that was taking care of his wife and we would go in to supplement his, his help. And, um, he would just get in the shower with her yeah. because yep. they were, he was able to know where she was at. So when he was in the shower, he didn't have to worry about listening because they were both right there, scrub each other up, <laughs> get it done. And you're done. You've got two yeah. done for one. Yep. And so there are so many ways <laughs> to make, make it happen, get it done. And every, every case is different. Grandma used to call it uh, running my grandpa through the car wash. <laughs> Yeah. I just thought that was great. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, but um, really, truly, when you're helping somebody also, you need to think about where they are mentally and, and talk about it step by step. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do this. But you don't give them all of the instructions. You just go, okay, right now we're going to get in. I'm going to shampoo you up, get that done, and then tell them the next step so they know what to expect. Yes, that's really important. Yeah. So uh, it also depends on what disease process that you are dealing with. True. But, um, um, and that could be a whole nother video of our podcast about um, different types of, of dementia or Parkinson's or any of that. Sure. So once again, we're just going to keep to the real basics of, general, yeah. of all of that. So hygiene, we started talking about lotioning. Lotioning is a big deal. Another one is is dental care. Mm -hmm. That's really a big deal. And, and you've got to know... Um, how to help people with dentures mm -hmm. or if they have their real teeth. Yes. Another thing that I want to step back and quick say is when we're helping these people, we don't want to take over. Right. If they're independent and able to do it on their own, then let them do it. It's going to take longer, but be you patient. can't be in a hurry be anytime <laughs> you've got something you need somebody to get done. Yes. Take let them take their time. Don't let them sense that you are in a hurry and, and just let them just stay as independent as they can for as long as they can. Yes. But um, hygiene is that dental and oral care, yep. putting lotion on their face, mm -hmm. brushing Even their hair. And some of our ladies have still just have really long, beautiful hair. Then they put it up in the bun or I got fired one time because one of my gals was not impressed how I put her hair into curlers. <laughs> Oh, my word. And I should be a pro because my mother had me in curlers almost every night. I slept in curlers. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> and I, 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 yeah, she was not impressed. She actually told the next caregiver, well, that girl did a bad <laughs> job with my curlers. <laughs> so, well, hmm. I can, yeah, I think I would, I would not be good at that either. Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can, um, brush hair. I can dry hair with a blow dryer. I can do a really mean braid, like yes. single, just a single three piece. <laughs> I don't know what that's called, but yeah. is it still just called a braid? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Anyway, I can do a, uh, halfway decent French braid. Okay. And yeah. that's about it. Now my, my girls were lucky to get a piggy tail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So anyway, so that's bathing and then your hygiene is is the lotioning and, and all yep. of that. Um, it's one of the big ones that we need to talk about is as an, an activity of daily living is transfers and positioning and mobility. Mm-hmm. So transfers are a bugger. Yes. B. And I had something I wanted to say quickly because I went to um, Investopedia. Okay. <laughs> and this is what they say about ADLs defined. They are routine activities that people do every day without assistance. Right. So essentially we are talking about these same activities that, you know, normally a person would be able to do without assistance, but now they've mm-hmm. reached a point that they need some assistance yeah. with this. So yep. yeah, transfers are a big deal. And generally if you're helping with transfers, then you're going to be on that, you know, mobility as well. Yeah. Yeah. A fall risk, those mm-hmm. kinds of things. Um, and the other thing to know about activities of daily living is honestly when, um, not everybody has every situation. I yeah. may not, I may need to help with a bath, but I don't need to help getting dressed. Um, and, or I, I, I do need help transferring, but then I'm able to go and, um, you know, make my own sandwich. Right. So you have to see what, do your assessment on sure. what I can, I'm going to need help with. Right. And so that's one of those things that when we're filling out the paperwork, like ta- Inga was talking to, at our last podcast for um, like your long-term care insurance, and they say you must meet three of the six ADLs. These are what they are. Right. And so not everybody has all six. Somebody might have two or three. Well, right. And even on a transfer, it might just be as much, as much or as little as I sit down on the couch and then I, maybe I don't have that strength to be able to lift myself all yeah. the way back up. But once I'm up, I can move around and yep. I'm okay. Yep. Um, but it, it's all so individual. Yeah. Um, and man, have we seen some transfers before that I'm like, I don't know how people haven't gotten hurt doing this. So yeah. if you're a family member and you're doing a questionable transfer, I highly encourage you to talk to um, a physical therapy office yeah. or a home health company yeah. because you don't want to get hurt trying to do something. I, I actually did a home visit just yesterday and um, this is a, a gal that her, her mama just broke her hip oh. and and there's unfortunately also confusion and so it's double hard and um, so uh, at this point mom doesn't think she can weight bear so every time she thinks she's going to get move she thinks it's going to hurt so she's really resisting all of that and she simply can't process right. that, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. We're just going to move you real quick. It, right. It's just, and the daughter, I mean, she hasn't even been home for a couple of days. The daughter has already tweaked her back. Oh, gosh. And so what I said is time out. We've got to get the OT and the PT here right now. They have to assess the safety. Right. And um, is it going to be a two-person transfer? So what does that mean? Do we need to get an assistance of, um, you know, some kind of a, a lift? Mm-hmm. in? And what is that going to be? Because is the mom able to bear weight at all? One of the simplest situations is what you already talked about. Basically, they're in the chair and they just need an, enough of a... A, oomph, a boost to get up. Um, there are the lift chairs that are just one of the best things you can get is, is it just kind of stands you up. That's just a recliner. And, right? you, and then, yeah. And then your um, wheelchair or your cane is there and it, it just gets you up. Um, and then it will lift, let you sit back down and not just plop down. Right. So that's a, a beautiful uh, mechanism right there. And then there are the sit to stand, um, uh, lifts. There's the Hoyer lift. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, in a perfect case in home care, you've got somebody that you can help with the use of a, a gate belt, pull them up. They can hold their weight for just a few seconds and pivot them and then sit them on the bed, sit them on the potty, sit them on the wheelchair, wherever you're going to be. Mm-hmm. And then when they're done, lift them back up, pivot, and then put them where they need to be. Yeah. And so, um, the biggest thing is, is, um, definitely, 
the uh, being able to wait bear. Yes, that's a big deal. And basically, I think what you're talking about from yesterday is it's a situation where the lady is fearful yes. that it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. And so when you're in that situation and then add the confusion to it, yeah. um, it's it could potentially be a recipe for disaster because, you know, she may do something inadvertently mm-hmm. that then... Well, you said the daughter is already has already hurt herself. So, yeah. so you know. I I did highly recommend that until they get that PT person in there. You know, if she is having a bad day and she is weaker than normal, just keep her in bed. Yep. And and keep it safe until somebody's there to show you proper techniques. Yes. Because there are ways to move people. Yeah. But. Also, if somebody is sitting there and they're only 80 pounds, if they're not going to help you, it, it doesn't matter how much they weigh. Right. And that's something that our caregivers are trained from day one is mm-hmm. that we cannot lift dead weight, essentially. Oh, yeah. Yep. And if someone is going to fall, we do our best to help lower them to the ground. Mm-hmm. But um, if, if you get in a situation of trying to catch someone mid-fall, that's when things can get really, really bad in terms of injury oh, to all everybody involved. It, it's just human. It's a reaction that we all yes. do. You see something falling. I was sitting at the rodeo the other <laughs> night, and a little girl Kate was sitting next to me, and I thought she was going to topple over, and I grabbed her. <laughs> and the parents just looked at me like I was so strange, but I was. Just, I really thought she was taking a header down the grandstand. <laughs> and was, that's what happens is when you see somebody going down, you just it's it's just a thing. And I was always worried about my mom and with my dad because dad was a big dude and yep. and mom you know she she's quite fit and active but man she um if he went down and she was trying to not have him go down forget it she was going to be underneath him and then there was a bigger problem right yeah um one of the scariest ones I ever saw though was just this lovely family um but the bathroom was downstairs and that's where he wanted to take his shower. And he was a really big guy, and she was a little bitty lady. And she's like, oh, we got this. And she would walk before him going downstairs to try to hold him as he took one step oh at a time. Gosh, and oh I was no. just like, you, you, no, you you got to rethink this. And, and, and the way that I had her stop to think about it, because she's like, well, we've been doing this forever. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. It's okay until it's not. Yes. Because one step from him and you're both going to be down at the bottom of the, the stairs. And I, I had to literally walk her and say, what's going to happen if he, if he just takes that one hesitation when you, you know, and, and she's like, oh, okay. And there are things that, um, you know, and a lot of these do cost money. So you have to take that in consideration. But we've been in some houses where there's absolutely the coolest um, stair um, chair. chairs where it's like an elevator, but you just sit in the chair and you go up. Yep. And then um, that's that would be a really cool thing if all we if all of us could have. that. Oh, yes. Um, but I also know of people that have to um, consider when they're looking for a house to live in, they want to have one level house. Because anything with, uh, you know, the sunken living room was romantic when you were in your 30s and 40s. But as you get uh, um, older, it's not so it's, much. It's a hazard now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and a lot of houses are, you know, a yeah. split level. Well, my grandma Fisher, um, so my grandpa remodeled. It's actually, it was an old school house. Mm-hmm. And it's three levels. And I, part of what I think has always helped her maintain, like, independence and um, being able to to just, you know, go through life and not have a lot of extra help is the fact that she was going up and down the stairs. Right. She was always so smart about the way that she would go up and down the stairs because she's very conscientious of not wanting to fall. But at this point in her life, because she does live alone, my mom lives in a house nearby, but um, she has elected to actually turn one of the rooms on the main floor into her bedroom. Oh, I'm because so glad to hear that. I know, I know. <laughs> because she knows that it, there's just risk involved. And can she do it and get up and down those stairs? Yes. But is it worth it when she has the option to be on one level? It's not worth trying to risk that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. And they, and, and often I hear that, well, this is the best exercise for me, but then, you know, what they do is they, they forget. And so they'll try to take a load of laundry with them <laughs> or something. And so they're not able to focus like yep. they, they think they are and in just one slip and we're, we've got yep. big problems. When Kevin and I build our house that we have now, um, when we were designing it, I was, because we, we had been doing this business for years before yeah. that happened. And, um, I, 
I knew I wanted everything that I would need as I aged to be available to me on one level. Right. So that, yeah. So we did it. So I'm good. I can live in my forever home. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, one of the next issues is toileting. Mm-hmm. And, and that task is, um, it's never pleasant. And so uh, the thing besides that is you've got to think about modesty. Because mm-hmm. a lot of these people don't want you right there when they're doing their business. Sure. And so you have to figure out how are you going to be um, giving them the privacy, but still be there. Right. And so women have it a little bit different than men. Um, some men are still, you know, still able to stand up and do their things except for a BM, but women have to sit down all the time. Right. And then a lot of the time it's hard to get back up. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people wear depends yep. and you know what, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yep. It is a, it's a thing that happens. Um, and, um, so you just have to go in there and understand, uh, that there, there's going to be embarrassment because you're in a very intimate situation. Sure. And so you just have to have a little bit of humor. I have a little bit of, uh, a lot of professionalism and just let them know, no big deal. Yep. No big deal. And it's okay. And one thing that I, know, I was just thinking about, um, from a situation is you can actually at times, you know, say there's somebody that has some dressing or needs assistance with dressing, you can use that toileting Mm -hmm. as a, as the opportunity to also do that. So someone sits down, it's, you know, they're going to the bathroom before it's time for bed, they're down. So you can easily get their pants off. Then you can easily get their pajama bottoms put back on. And so basically, um, you kind of learn how to use every opportunity to consolidate, um, to, to consolidate (laughs) and to kind of, you know, to the advantage of taking good care of somebody with the, a minimal amount of invasion, I guess, because like you're saying, it is, it's really personal. It's very private and you want to respect everybody's dignity and, and try to maintain it as best as you can. But that's why, like you're saying, you know, our caregivers have just this, this, this really, really wonderful level of professionalism. And I think being able to laugh is, you know, obviously you have to know your crowd, right? So <laughs> right, right. I can make really bad jokes oh, to you. And I would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably not to everybody, but, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. And so back to toileting, mm-hmm. um, also make sure you have, uh, well, actually every activity that you do have the things you need there. So if they're, if they're bathing, have the towel there, have the shampoo. You don't want to leave somebody. Yes. Um, and when you're toileting somebody, have your gloves there. Uh, one of the things that you have to think about all the time is infection control. Mm-hmm. And so uh, wash, wash, wash your hands, um, use gloves and wipes. Baby wipes are awesome. Don't flush those. <laughs> um, they do make bigger ones for bigger bottoms. And um, But when you're helping somebody to toilet them, once again, that's an excellent time for you to be able to look for um, skin breakdown. Um, Sometimes yeast is an issue. Smell is an issue. These are a big problem. I remember one time a a gentleman just happened to come into our office and he was just having a fit because he couldn't get his wife into the bathtub. um, And he just frankly said, she stinks. And so, um, you know... because she was refusing to bath, he, he didn't know what to do with her. And so what we said to start with is just have your have her wipe with those wet wipes because it will only, not only clean her up with that, but it will hopefully get some of the other off of there every time she goes potty. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then have a warm rag there because who wants to put anything cold? Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, anyway, there's tricks to the trade. Yes. On that. And then when somebody's on the potty, you know, is that a good time to just have a, a bowl of hot water and, and the rag and get everything clean right then? Um, a lot of times BM is a big deal. And um, who knew that as you get older, your whole life re- revolves around poop time. Yeah. And it's a big deal. <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. <laughs> and um, so anyway, uh, you've got to just make sure that there's nothing dried on their backside. Sure. Um, and all of that will really wear and tear on skin. Yes. And um, once again, your, your smell is a big thing. And um, if you're smelling like a real ammonia type smell, you know, do we have a UTI going on? Mm -hmm. And when somebody is older, that UTI is it's it affects you so much differently. Yes. And it is actually almost a behavior thing. Yeah, and it's crazy. I mean, when we start to hear about someone that is not behaving like their normal yeah, self, they're they're mean, they're yeah, oh, they're yeah, cranky. They're the first thing we say is they need to get 
they need to get tested for a UTI because yeah. that will wreak havoc yeah. on people. And unfortunately, with our elders, a, a lot of the time, a UTI becomes a reoccurrent situation. Yes. So you got to change those depends more often than you want to. Right. Even though they feel dry, they're not. Right. Yeah. I mean, they make them so good nowadays, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. And there are several different kinds and sizes of these, these pull-up panties. There's pull-ups, there's the Velcro. You got to find the ones that work best for you. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and then let's talk about eating. Sure. There's meal preparation and there's eating. Yep. And so are you dealing with somebody that um, has throat issues? So should they only be having a parade uh, right. type or soft meal? Because are they able to swallow? Mm -hmm. Are you working with somebody that's a diabetic, right. um, low sodium because they have heart issues? You've got to find all of that out. Is it somebody that, that has reached a point cognitively that mm -hmm. they don't even really remember how to feed themselves? Right. So you are physically yeah. feeding them. Yeah. Or like you're talking about the swallowing issue. Is it something that there's risk of aspiration? Yep. So you need to have your liquids thickened mm -hmm. or... Um, yeah, there's a lot that can go along with eating and, you know, more than just cutting up somebody's food yeah. because different situations warrant a different approach. However, um, cutting up somebody's food, we had a gal and I can't remember what her diagnosis was, but her loving husband, he actually, um, what he did with like the fork and the spoon is he bought rubber uh, and put that around the spoon handle mm -hmm. so that it was bigger yep. and, and easier for her to hold. So it actually gave her months more of being able to be independent. Yep. She couldn't do it with a normal fork or spoon, but when he put that apparatus on there, it gave her the ability. Yep. So there just, you have to think outside of the box yep. all well, the time. Yes. And you had mentioned, um, I don't remember what ADL task we were talking about, but the um, being patient. Yeah. I remember we had a client that um, the caregiver said, I mean, it would be hours, between an hour and two hours for this person to eat their meal. Yeah. But that's what it took for them to safely eat their meal. And you just you just needed to have patience with that person and let them do it, go at their own pace um, so that they could be safe about it and not have a, not be a choking hazard oh, or... Yeah. Oh yeah, so it's very important to know the uh, the 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 food they're able to eat, mm -hmm. um, and um, make sure that you're cutting it up or you're mixing it up as thickening as it. They or, need to be, yep. yeah. So that's all about the food preparation. Uh, one thing that we have to be very careful with elder elderly people is protein. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you need to supplement with a boost or an insure or some kind of a protein drink? And they come in all these flavors nowadays. My grandma, she loves to have her big smoothies and she puts in all kinds of green stuff. <laughs> and, but a lot of also the, the, the protein powder, Sure, but that's how she gets that. But a lot of people decide that they it's they're just not interested in eating anymore and so we have to encourage people to eat yep and so get them that extra protein you know if do they need scrambled eggs what is their favorite thing yes and then sometimes to keep people going you just have finger foods buy them all the time because maybe they'll mindlessly pick instead of just sitting in front of the table and not eating anything but at least they're getting something in them mm -hmm. and then water Yep. Hydration is a big deal. A lot of times people are admitted to the hospital simply by dehydration. And so you've got to do that a lot. There have been times when people, um, families are watching input and output. Mm -hmm. So they want to know how much is going in. Yep. But um, I, me personally, I have to remember to drink water. It's a job because yeah. you've got to remember to to keep drinking. Yes. Um, and eating is the same thing. And um, then exercise Mm -hmm. is also one of those and exercise can simply be walking around the island in the kitchen a couple times a day yep. um, when grandma had some heart stuff going on um, they gave her the little heart pillow and she would hold it and she would have to stand up from her chair 10 times and have to do it like three or four times a day and that was the exercise yeah. that she was able to do so also um, with that being said once again what is the doctor allowing them to do for whatever they have going on sure grandma wasn't able to do a whole bunch until she built up her stamina again right. and um, so uh, with that um, knowing your people's mobility back to mobility just mm -hmm. a bit um, are they safe to mm -hmm. walk do they have to have a cane or a um the wheelchair or the walker, you know, and a lot of people, 
it's a pride thing. They don't want to have anything, but after they start using it, they realize that nobody really is cares. They yeah. just want them to be safe. Absolutely. Yes. And exercise can be as simple as even just like range of motion yeah. or doing some stretching. Yeah. Um, it's just trying to not have your muscles atrophy or, you know, and everybody is going to have a different level of what they're able to do and what they should be doing. Just like you yes. said, you know, the doctor or their physical therapist, somebody's going to should help them come up with that, what that plan is. Maybe it's even family. Maybe mm-hmm. they've not really reached a point that they need extra medical attention, but Mm -hmm. just as a family, you decide that, okay, the exercise plan is up and around the, like you said, around the island in the kitchen four times, or even, you know, for people that live in apartments, um, a lot of people that we care for, it's, it's literally just walking down to the mailbox and then walking back to their apartment, but just something to keep, keep people going so that they don't, um, kind of stagnate and well and I don't mean to turn this into a doom and gloom but we had a a client of ours Mm -hmm. just the most sweetest man in the world yes um but he um it's it's a use it or lose it yes you have to use your muscles yes you have to get out there and do something and he just couldn't for whatever reason Yep. And uh, he was not able to to stand any longer. Yes. So he eventually went to the wheelchair. Then he eventually went to the electric scooter and everything. He just went backwards. Yeah. And it was because he simply didn't get up and use those muscles. Yeah. We, we watched him deteriorate. It's It was really, really sad. And it, unfortunately, it was a choice to mm-hmm. to not, you know, help himself. And, and there will be people out there that that choose to do that. Um, but as, as leaders and family members, you know, we want to encourage people to get them moving and, yeah. um, you know, come up with a fun way to do it. You if know. you can, if, if you, you can. can, that's yeah. for sure. So that's kind of our activities of daily living mm-hmm. is once again, all of the things that an able-bodied person is, is able to do. And what was the definition again? Um, so basically, they are defined as routine activities that people do every day without assistance. Right. Yep. Right. What we take for granted. Now, another, the next section of ADLs is actually called IADLs. Yes. And that's the instrumental activities of daily living. And um, those are the things that are extra nice to have once we've done the ADLs. And that's everything to include communication, transportation, community integration, shopping, meal preparation, medication reminders, housekeeping, laundry, and finances. Mm -hmm. So once again, doesn't mean that that's everything that we would do or you would do. Um, It just pick and choose what the person is not able to do. Yeah. And what, what I read about IADLs, um, again, another type of definition, it is it, those are activities um, that require a combination of physical and cognitive capabilities um, versus the like the basic self-care skills of an activity of daily living. And those would be more things that you learned during your early childhood. Right. Or IADLs are things that it's a combination of the two put together. But um, someone that needs assistance or a lot of assistance with an ADL may no longer be able to do an IADL. Maybe they have the cognitive component, but they don't have the physical component to be able, they know how to do laundry, but they can't physically get it done. Right. Right. Um, or it could be a, con- I mean, it could be that they've lost the ability to do both things, to know what to do and how to do it and physically be able to do it. Yes. Um, so ID ADLs are uh, topics uh, that bring up a lot of discussion about pride and abilities. Yes. <laughs> uh, these are very real obstacles your client can be dealing with or your loved one. Yes. Um, not necessarily all of them at the same time, but even the inability to do one or two of these things can cause much discomfort in their life. Mm-hmm. And it's all about quality of life. So uh, basically what those are, um, what we're trying to do when we're with people is, is enhance that quality of life. Mm-hmm. So uh, the IADLs, the first one is housekeeping. Mm-hmm. And um, we see a lot of different houses. Mm-hmm. And we have everything from um, almost a hoarding situation where we have to figure out how we're going to get the the piles moved so that it's wide enough for the the walker to get through are are to the um big houses where they have a housekeeper that comes every week so just a just a ton of 
different scenarios. Every house is run differently. I'm going to tell you that when I become the patient, I will happily turn over my <laughs> housekeeping chores. You don't have to keep me engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So what we do at Ipaga Home Care is light housekeeping. Now we're not the merry maids right. because we are all about the body yep. and, and doing those tasks of activities of daily living. But if we do a bath, then we'll clean up after ourselves. If we make a sandwich, we're going to clean up after ourselves. Sure. Now, like the Medicaid program that we have doesn't mean that we are just the maid. Right. And so that's really hard for some people because they think that's all they really want is someone to come pick up after them. And they might have a few people that live with them and we're only to help those sure. that are on the program. Yeah, and their areas of use. Yeah. yeah. So people but need to understand that. Sure. And private pay is a little bit different. Yeah. You know, we can do more, but when we are working within specific programs, um, we are bound by their directive and parameters. Right. But yeah, but I mean, and you said it, we're not merry made. Mm -hmm. So our, it is not our primary objective to go and do like heavy housekeeping type nope. things, but do we help our people with their vacuuming and their laundry and making yep. beds? Of course we do. Yep. And, and we like to engage them as much as they want to be engaged. So, um, you know, maybe someone can't get their laundry to the, to the washing machine and then transfer it into the dryer, but they like to be able to fold it. So, yep. you know, we're going to, we're going to make that available to them and help them as they need it. Um, maybe, Maybe they can't do all of the making of the bed anymore, but they can put the pillows into the pillowcases and, and we get to wrestle the, the fitted sheets. Oh, those <laughs> fitted sheets. Yes. yes. On bunk beds. I had to do that at <laughs> Bailey's dorm room. Oh my Did Lord. you climb up on the top or I, what did you, how'd you do it? Well, we actually took the mattress off. <laughs> and put as much on it as we could and then lifted it back up. Oh. And then one of the girls, her roommate was on top helping <laughs> put it all together. And I was just kind of filling in the edges. Oh, that's but funny. It was, it would have been comical to video. Oh honestly. yeah. It, probably somebody did. Cause <laughs> I just don't know about it yet. I'm quite sure there was a lot of <laughs> laughing involved. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so that's the housekeeping portion. We're happy to help people. Sure. We want to help them with that, but we don't bog out the basement sure. or, or we also don't climb up on things to change a light bulb or get the cobwebs. Right. Um, medication reminders. Now that's a big one because we are non-medical. Yep. So, um, people have to understand that if they get them dispensed, we can then do the reminders. Yep. So putting them in the pillboxes is a great thing. And then we're yeah, able to do that. A family member does that, yeah. or perhaps they're prepackaged from a pharmacy. Oh, the, that's the best, the bubble I packs. I love those bubble packs. Yeah. yeah. They, but anyway, yeah, absolutely. If they are predispensed, and um, then our caregivers are able to give a medication reminder. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, that's, that's how that works too. Um, and then what other... Um, Kind of so things. some of the like activities of daily living things that we do are in, incidental, instrumental, um, some, you know, transportation, incidental transportation, mm -hmm. maybe that's going to the grocery store and, and helping someone get their groceries right. or running them to the pharmacy to get their prescriptions. Uh, maybe we're doing a medical escort yeah. um, and different programs have different rules around what we can do, you know, right. on the private pay side of it. Of course, that's a little more open um, as long as we're not doing anything invasive, but um yeah, those errand type things. And even we've had private pay clients in the past that um, they want to have their caregiver help them in their flower garden or yeah. picking raspberries or, and you know, those are allowable things that maybe they can't do without assistance, um, but with the caregiver there with them, or maybe we go out and pick the raspberries and then come in and they help, you know, do whatever we're doing, turn, in, turn them into a jam or something. Well, one of the coolest ones I remember is, is a gal that was in her 90s and she was blind, mm -hmm. um, but she insisted on handwritten Christmas cards. Oh. So the family asked us to come in and write down everything so that she could sen still yes. have those sent out yes. and be handwritten because that was what was important to her. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome. I mean, we get to do some like really, really, really cool yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, activities, daily living, incidental daily living, um, activities, boy, we could just talk for days and days. Yes. That is just a quick synopsis mm -hmm. of that. And, um, if anybody ever has any questions, you know, Google them, look them up, call us. We're happy to talk about those. The other thing that's interesting is, is even find a support group. Mm -hmm. to talk about the different things about how somebody deals with um, mother that refuses to bathe. Yours mother isn't the first one in the world that never wanted to take a bath, right? <laughs> right. Somebody's been out there. Somebody has done that. Yeah. I was just listening to something the other day and they were like, you know what? Put your pride away. 
and ask questions. Yes. You are not the first one in the world that had um, somebody, um, you know, have an accident in the right. middle of church. Right. You know, somebody just, out there has been there yes. and can help you. And 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 don't feel alone. Ask for ask for help. Yep. It is there for you. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that brings us to the grandma sayings, which uh. I've turned over to you this time, Julie. Oh. You know, the one that I loved was be lovable. Uh, and this gal said, I've lived a long life because there are so many people who love me. Oh, And I think that kind of wraps up all of the activities of daily living we were talking about. Yep. We, are, we want to help our people. Yes. We want to help our loved ones. Yes. But don't forget to also love yourself mm-hmm. and, and make sure that you're okay when you're taking care of someone else. Yes. So that was adorable. I love it. Yes. I guess I guess that's it. So we ask you to please subscribe. Um, we are on. Oh, boy. Where are we? We're Spotify. Spotify. Uh, Google Podcast. Google Podcast. Popcast. Popcast. Bo- Podcast. I had to learn what they were. <laughs> now and I got to learn how to say it. <laughs> Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. <laughs> You can share us with your friends. You can join our Apaga Karen Share group on Facebook. Um, yeah, check us out. Oh, we're on the TikTok now. We're on the TikTok. That's the <laughs> Care Given Podcast. Yep. And we're also on Instagram. So we are everywhere. And you guys make sure when you watch our stuff that you like it. So we can get those. Evidently, it's a big thing to get your numbers up. <laughs> and yes, like us. Like us, if love you do, us. If you don't like us, um, that's okay. Just, just be... Be heavenly and be kind. Yes. Give us grace. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, we're all over the place now. And we're sure having fun with these podcasts. This is really, really, I love talking about this stuff. This is the stuff. (laughs) Isn't it funny, the things that we get excited about? I know. I know. Uh, So it's all good. So is there anything else? No, I think that's it. That's it. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Have a good day. 